submarine known as the USS Triton has completed the first submerged circumnavigation of planet Earth. The Andes mountain range stretches on as far as the eye can see. 5,500 miles of the highest highs and the lowest lows, creating mythical terrain that have captured the gaze of generations. It's at the southern and northernmost ends that the mountain range plunges in to the watery abyss. It's here that the underwater peaks create the idyllic tropical destination of Aruba and the climber's paradise of Patagonia. But beneath the surface, way down below, the massive tectonic plate that slipped under the continental crust to form the mountain range so long ago is beginning to stir within its long slumber. You are watching this road. The following message is transmitted at the request of the police department of the city of... In a recent decree, the Bolivian government has threatened to confiscate and sell the railway company away from the Chileans. Being a key mining enterprise for the Chilean economy, this will simply not do. The Chilean government sends out a small military force to the port, and in response, the Bolivian president officially declares war on Chile. The president also stronghands Peru into joining the battle via a secret treaty signed six years earlier. And so, the War of the Pacific is on. It's clear that he who has control of the sea has the upper hand, so the Chilean naval commander plans to sail north and attack the Peruvians at their port. He leaves behind two older wooden ships to keep a blockade on a Peruvian port they had secured earlier. The first is the Corvette Esmeralda, and the second is the Esmeralda. But while the main Chilean fleet is sailing north, a Peruvian fleet is looping back south to reclaim their port. Aided by tons of steel and steam-powered propellers, the Huascar and the Independencia have the technological advantage, and they've just been spotted in the distance. Peru fires the first shot. By 8.15, the Esmeralda and the Covadonga are making a beeline for retreat. By 8.25, a second shot from Huascar lands directly on the Esmeralda, killing their surgeon instantly, beheading his assistant and mortally wounding another. By 8.45, the Covadonga is in pursuit by the Independencia, and the Esmeralda is being finished off by Huascar. The Esmeralda then positions itself strategically close to the Peruvian village, meaning that if the Huascar wants to try firing more rounds into them, they'd have to have extremely precise aim or risk killing Peruvian civilians behind them. Instead, they settle on ramming the Esmeralda, then firing at close range. The tactic proves deadly, and the Esmeralda sinks. Meanwhile, the last remaining Chilean ship is in hot pursuit by the Peruvians. They decide to skirt along the bay. Being a lighter ship, they can float above the submerged rocks and into shallow waters. The Peruvian ship, weighing significantly more, grinds against the submerged mountain peaks. The Chileans then circle back and fire at the now-grounded ironclad vessel. Seeing the gunfight a mere nine miles away, the remaining Peruvians chase the now fleeing Chileans for another three hours. Noticing the distance, they fire a last warning shot. It's a 
this Saturday. In the traditional ceremony of the Battle of a is set to take place over the holiday weekend. But off the coast, our tectonic plate is shifting. The shift's reverberations flow steadily upwards and straight into the town of Concepcion. For 35 seconds, the ground wobbles, and by the end of it, the 8.3 magnitude quake has destroyed a third of the city's buildings, claimed 125 lives. The president of Chile calls off the battle's memorial. Nearby coal miners who had been protesting for higher salaries pack things up. Some survivors jump in boats to seek refuge out at sea. The sound of emergency services reverberate through cracked streets. The Magellanic woodpecker is known for foraging in low tree trunks this time of year. He's looking for grubs, maybe some beetles, but he'll settle for old tree sap as well. But something feels wrong today. Within seconds, the entire forest is hit with another seismic quake. This one coming in at 7.1 mags. 50 kilometers south, a third one hits the town of Perun. Another 15 minutes later, and another 300 kilometers south, in the town of Valdivia, the largest earthquake ever recorded is slowly making its way to their borders. What makes this string of earthquakes so powerful is that the Nazca plate here has shifted under the continental plate here, compared to a standard quake where the plates collide side by side. In a farm outside of the city, a Jose Argomero is riding his horse when he begins to feel the ground shaking. With the Cold War at its height, the farmer is at first convinced it's a nuclear attack. In the case of nu but then the shaking persists. And so for the next 10 minutes, the region surrounding Valdivia is hit with a 9.5 magnitude earthquake. For 150,000 square miles along the coast, towns and villages are shook to their core. The waters rise 13 feet, and the shaking stops, and the water recedes. One of the groups that sought refuge in the waters from the first quake are now stranded in the rapidly receding water level. And by 1620, nearly an hour after the initial shock, the first wave hits the coast. 26 feet of pure energy batters the surrounding coastal villages. Ten minutes later, an even larger 33-foot wave shows no mercy. Ships are battered to a pulp. And the soil on the surface is now experiencing a phenomena called subsidence. The rapid changes in compacted conditions result in massive unleveled sediment, which results in massive cracks and landslides. The seismic quake creates a sort of ripple effect, and its waves are now moving at a speed of 150 miles per hour, straight into Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, China, New Zealand, and Australia. Peaceful. Then, the sound of a distant train. Hawaii is hit. The sound of a distant train. Japan is hit. They can only look on. In total, approximately 1,655 were killed, 3,000 were injured, and 2 million were left homeless in Chile. In Hawaii, 61 deaths, and another 138 lost in Japan. A memorial 
commemorates the lives lost. The Andes mountain range stretches on as far as the eye can see. Over 5,500 miles of the highest highs and the lowest lows hides one last trick up its sleeve. Southeast of Valdivia, the volcano Cardon Co erupts, emitting a massive column of volcanic gas and ash which burns on for another 59 days. Marking the definite end of the largest earthquake for now. Brilliant offers online classes that teach through interactivity, like this lesson on the center of mass. Here it's less about memorizing or regurgitating facts for a test, more about intuitively understanding the concepts behind a lesson in order to forge a new path ahead. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do.